Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg. Um, today I'm going to inaugurate an, a new series. It's going to be called, What Were They Thinking? What the hell huh? what? were you thinking? And it's going to focus on sort of weird incidences or inventions or oddities in the history of the fountain pen. And um, I'm particularly fascinated um, by a pen that was developed by Pelican in 1996 called the Level 65, and then that was followed up by the Level 5. And um, it has a very strange, unique way of filling the pen. I, and I'm one of those people who are very suspicious of the word unique, but I think in this case it does apply. Um, I was talking to a friend who um, is from Germany, and I mentioned to him how much I like Pelican pens, and I have some reasonably expensive ones, like the M1000 and the M800, and he said, oh, yeah, he didn't even know, somebody from Germany, that they made expensive pens, because as a school student um, and kid, he used Pelican cheap pens. Pelican does very well in the market for making inexpensive pens for children. I, I may down the road do a little video about pens that are, are aimed at kids, right? And in Europe particularly, um, kids still learn to write with fountain pens. So that's a very important market. But then of course Pelican has a whole range of pens that are luxury pens. And, um, and then I think in that case they're competing with, with German brands like Mont Blanc and Lamy, I think, um, in a way, um, I think Pelican pens are just amazing. They, they invented the piston filler, um, but they don't have quite, I think, the same cachet and prestige of Mont Blanc, and therefore they, I don't think they can charge the same type of prices, or people aren't willing to pay so easily the same prices. Um, at the same time, they don't have the kind of hipness of Lamy. They don't, I don't think they might have hit that kind of high design in some of their lesser, uh, more inexpensive pens that are meant to appeal to people maybe in high school or in their 20s. So I'm trying to sort of figure out why they came up with the level uh, 65, which was targeted for um, uh, high school kids. So let's go back to 1996. Um, and um, Pelican introduces this new pen, and you can see that it's meant to appeal. It has these bright colors, and it's look, it looks very modern. And you can think another another aspect. I think probably what they were what was in their mind um, was the fact that now the 90s were getting into the computer age. The internet is taking off, et cetera, et cetera. Um, fountain pens must seem very old-fashioned. What can you do to make a fountain pen seem more up-to-date, new, um, and how can it have a kind of technology that is um, exciting? And so part of that is the design of the pen, which has a kind of space-age look to it. And you can see that it has a kind of nib that um, relates very closely to the kind of nib that's on the Lamy Safari and is interchangeable in the same way that the Lamy Safari nib is interchangeable. And this nib will actually fit on other um, fairly low-end Pelican pens. Um, so here's what the pen looks like. But so what they're thinking about is the filling system. And so here's the level five and this strange ink chamber or ink well and the idea with this pen as they advertise it is that it has an enormous capacity to hold ink um, it's claiming that it has five times the amount of ink as a standard fountain pen so the idea is once you fill the pen you don't need to fill it maybe it'll last you for months and months and you don't have to fill it and in order to fill the pen, though, that's the rub, you have to go through a kind of curious process in which you insert the pen 
into a well, an ink well, and you push on the bottom of the ink well. You have to line up, before you insert the pen in though, you have to line up the bottom of the pen, it screws so that two circles come together, um, and then you fill the pen by pushing up on the bottom of the uh, ink well, and then you then have to get the ink from the main ink well chamber to a kind of second chamber and you do that by uh, turning the knob to uh, the arrow and then when you're ready to write you have to put the knob back to the zeros. I find all this, the arrows and the zeros, all very um, confusing. Um, the pen comes with elaborate instructions and a lot of visuals um, the notion, I think, is that somehow if you look at these visuals, they will be self-explanatory. But in fact, I find them very confusing. And it took quite a while for me to figure out how to fill this pen. Now, after the pen was introduced, I guess it sold reasonably well. Um, Pelican decided to bring out the Level 5, a much more expensive pen that was targeted for grown-ups. Um, it comes also in this kind of plastic cover, but um, instead of it being a kind of shrink wrap kind of thing that you have to cut open and throw out, this actually opens up and the pen sits in this strange bottom element that is supposed to work as a pen stand and double as the place where the ink bottle, which looks like this, um, sits. It's inside the metal um, chamber. Um, and then again, you take the pen and you put the little um, section, the little bottom part, you turn it to zero, zero, and then you put it into the um, pen stand, and then from the bottom you push and that gets the ink into the main chamber and then when you want to get ink to finally write you have to put the thing onto the arrow get the ink, let the ink pour into the, uh, the other chamber that feeds the nib and then you put the, um, the, the bottom part, you turn it and you make it onto the zeros. As you can see I'm very confused. I've done it many times but I find it very confusing. The other strange thing about this pen is that um, there are no directions in the pen um, guide to um, how you clean it, right? You, and here's another thing that's odd about it too, is that there are only two colors that you can get with these um, uh, ink, ink bottles. It comes in, you can get it in a kind of royal blue or a black. Um, you, there's no instructions for cleaning the pen. So once you've put blue ink in it, there are no instructions for how to get the ink or take the pen apart and clean the blue ink out. So you can put black ink into it. Um, you really, or once you've chosen what you're gonna put into it, you are stuck with the particular color that you want, unless you buy an extra bottle which you could fill with water and then uh, very after a long process of filling it and emptying it and filling it and emptying it that would be one way to clean it. There are also various people on the web who have experimented by taking the pen apart and cleaning it. It is supposedly possible to do that but it isn't recommended and there are absolutely no instructions for the company about doing that. Now keep in mind that um, particularly um, pre-2000, before the sort of huge revival of interest in fountain pens, most people only put one color of ink in their fountain pen. They didn't tend to switch from one color to another. So the, I suppose that's what they were thinking, that once someone chose a particular color, they weren't going to change. However, what happens if you stupidly leave your pen out without its cap and it dries out? How are you supposed to clean it? That happens a lot with fountain pens. Even if you only use one color, you often have to sort of clean them out, right? But, you, but there are no instructions on, on how to do that. That's very strange. Um, there are also a lot of complaints about the pen stand. 
that it makes it difficult actually to pump the ink into it and that the better way, and actually Pelican does suggest this, that it's easier um, to use the um, bottle of ink and just directly put the pen into it. So here's the stand and here's the pen. And when you feed ink into the pen, you put it into this part and then you press down here and the ink goes into the pen. That's the idea. But sometimes it doesn't, in which case they recommend that you open this up and just pull the ink out and then do it with do it directly with this by putting the pen into this like this. Right? And that's pushing on the bottom to get the ink into the bottom. You have to go through a process of turning the pen here on the bottom. And when you're filling the pen, you put it the two zeros together that are on here. And then when you're trying to get the ink from this chamber into the pre-chamber, I guess, you have to put it on the arrow. And then when you write inexplicably, you have to put it back on the zeros. Um, one advantage of that process, I suppose, is that it keeps the ink from, because you have so much ink in the pen, it keeps the ink from pouring out or leaking if you're on an airplane, I think. And um, I think there was a worry that if you did this just as a big eyedropper pen, which seems to me like a better idea, that it would leak. Um, now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, they had already, people have already developed the vacuum pen and there are other solutions to this, to getting pens with a lot of, lot of ink. But anyway, Pelican decided that this was the way to go. And um, it's very strange. It, it should be no surprise to you that this did not really sell well. And by 2006, they stopped making them. Now, they seem to have made so many of them, however, because I guess in order to do something like this, to justify, you have to make a certain amount of them, but you can still get this pen, that there are always on eBay, there are a lot of them on eBay, and um, there are mint ones, there are ones that are still in their boxes, and um, there's still a kind of market out there for, for getting these pens. Um, but keep in mind that um, if you plan to wash them, clean them out, you either are gonna have to take them apart, going using instructions that you can find on the web, or you got to have at least um, two bottles, one that you would empty of ink uh, and put water in it, and one which you have ink in it. Now, it is true. This is something, this is something that is not that clear in the instructions. That when you run out of ink, you don't have to buy a new bottle. You can open these bottles and put more ink in them. Um, but it's not particularly easy to uh, find that in the instructions that you can, you can do that. But... It is something that you can do. You can put more ink into the pen. And I suppose if you collect a bunch of these bottles, then you would be able to put other color inks into, into the pen. I've stuck with basically the blue and the black. The good news, there is good news, which is that actually these pens write really well. And you will find that out on the web also, that people who have them are very pleased with the way they write. They, there's a, um, I'll do a writing sample. They are relatively smooth and they have a nice, nice feedback to them. And I have uh, used a broad and a medium and I am kind of pleasantly surprised by how nicely um, they write. And so I suppose that is a good thing, but I think it would have been better if they had developed a pen that would be easier to clean and had similar similar nib um, and perhaps used a converter or even an old-fashioned piston filler but had uh, a larger ink capacity um, because a lot of piston fillers actually can hold quite a lot of ink. Um, it's, it's hard to imagine, I, I said what were they thinking yeah, I am sort of imagine. I am trying to imagine what was the uh, uh, ideas that probably went through in the meetings and discussions of, of this pen. But it, you know, when you keep in mind all the money that would go into producing something like this, and all of the 
uh, negatives of, of this pen system, how difficult, I mean, the number one problem is how difficult it is to fill the pen. It's not easy to figure it out. And it, and it is so complicated that if you don't do it, since you don't do it that often, your whole point is you're supposed to do it, you know, once every few months, I always have to look it up again if I want to put more ink in it because it's kind of confusing. The other thing is, is that although the pen holds a lot of ink, um, the top part of it, uh, the first chamber, doesn't hold that much ink. And so if you're writing, I found if I'm writing three or four pages, I have to, I have to go back and switch it to um, the arrow, which doesn't necessarily make sense to me, and then pour, try to get the ink to go into the front of the pen, uh, which it sort of does by doing that, by just sort of going like that and watching it, trying to see if, if anything is happening, and then remembering that I have to put it back to the, where the two zeros come together, which makes no sense at all. I don't understand why two zeros together would mean right, and then I can write again. So it's not, it's not like some of you might be thinking, oh, well, it's like uh, the Pilot Custom 823, where you have to remember to uh, uh, unscrew uh, the, the bottom you know, to let air in, or Opus 88 is like that, right? Uh, but that is just one-time thing, and when you're writing, it just goes, right? This you have to remember to do every four or five pages, so I think that's very odd also. Here's what these pens look like in comparison to uh, the Lamy Safari. You can see they're very similar in size. The Level 65, which is all plastic, um, is, you can see, has this interesting top. And it posts, actually. And when it posts, it even, in a way, it looks to me more like the Safari, right? You can see how they seem to be very related design-wise. Um, the Lamy, excuse me, this <laughs> the Pelican um, 5 looks like it would post, but guess what? It doesn't post. So when it's not posted, it's actually a pretty small, short pen. It's okay. It's The size is okay, but I would rather, I would prefer it if it posted. So that's a strange thing about the uh, design of this pen. It looks kind of nice, though. I like the way it bows out when it, the cap isn't on it. But when the cap is on it, I think it's a very peculiar-looking pen with this barrel that kind of bulges out. I like the color blue. That, I think, is nice. But I'm not crazy about the way this bulges out. And the other thing I'm not crazy about is the metal um, section, which I always find is to be a bit slippery, although it's kind of brush mellow, so it's not, it's not too bad. The nib, actually, even though this is a much more expensive pen, it was, I think, marketed around at least $100, is the same as the nib on the Level 65. The pen itself, though, is reasonably heavy, and it seems much more substantial, so that part is nice. And um, there's a kind of motif there. They, another interesting factor about these pens is they have dropped, for these pens, the idea that the uh, clip looks like a pelican, a pelican beak, right? Neither of these pens really are taking up that design cue, I suppose. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe that's how you could justify the wideness of the pen cap so that maybe it looks a little bit like a bird. I don't know. But um, the level 5 has this sort of motif with these little dots um, and they use that with this sort of turning knob, the knob that turns it to um, when you're supposed to fill it or not fill it, that's completely confusing. Um,
So how does it write? Well, this is the level 65. And it's a broad. And I have the uh, royal blue ink in it. This is Rhodia paper. The good news is that it writes really nicely. In fact, it reminds me a lot of a um, Lamy Safari. I would say it's a little bit smoother, but it's a kind of nice feedback too. It's almost like a little bit like a pencil. And um, it's nicely wet. Smooth. Okay. There isn't much flex to the nib. It's like a nail, really. Okay, so that's the less expensive pen. Okay, so here is the level 5, which is the more expensive version. I have this one in black. And I would say it writes, it's a little drier. A little scratch here. I'm not thrilled by this black color. Now, keep in mind, though, I'm not sure how old the zinc is. I mean, it's, well, it's probably 20 years old. So that may be part of the problem. And because this pen is not easy to clean, I did not clean it before I used it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, supposedly, when I bought it, it was supposedly mint and hadn't been used. So, but I would prefer a darker black than this. So there you go. Uh, what were they thinking? Um, uh, I, I've gone through some of the ideas they may have been thinking. I mean, I have to give them kudos for doing something different and not doing the same old thing. I always, I always love that. Um, I've said before that I really like what Shown Design is doing and experimenting with new nibs. I like the fact that Pen BBS is always coming out with new filling systems or bringing back old filling systems. So it's kind of exciting for us. And I think that was the, but the appeal for me about the level 5 and 65 that I went out. I, like, I love Pelican pens, and I was really curious about them. And I enjoy having this. Um, but on the other hand, um, 
I don't, I, I just can't quite comprehend, you know, why, why it's a still a big question mark. And if people know, uh, meaning if they've actually had some connection with the designers of this pen or know something more about its history or have other feelings about it, do let me know. If you're interested in this uh, kind of uh, review, uh, please subscribe to the channel. That's the way um, I, uh, you support it and it helps me make new videos.